Hi there, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the French bass bow hold. Um, when I have students come to me for the first time for private lessons or come to me uh, into my school orchestra class or if I'm watching orchestras play as a performance evaluation judge, one of the very common things I see is significant problems in bass bow holds, whether it's French or German. Um, so today I want to go over some of the basics of putting together a French bow hold and hopefully this will be helpful to you. I'm going to play just a couple of uh, bow strokes here. I was, I'll just play a D scale for you. As, and as I play, you should pay attention to the bow hold, to the way I have my fingers curved, to the way the bow is placed on the string, and then we'll come in closer after that and go over the details of putting together a French bass bow hold. So here's just, just a D scale. So at this point, I'm going to cut away and get in a little bit closer to show you the details of the bow hold. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit now about how to actually put the French bow hold together. When I'm starting the French bow with a student, I'll start out having them just relax their arm. I'll talk to them about having the arm being relaxed like a piece of overcooked spaghetti. Just completely loose. Elbow, I'll talk about being soft or being relaxed because you don't want them to lock out their elbow. I almost never talk about the elbow being straight. It's always a relaxed elbow or a soft elbow. You never want the elbow bent. When the elbow bends up, it causes all kinds of irregularities down here in the wrist and in the fingers. So always a relaxed or soft elbow. Let the fingers curve naturally. When you look at someone's hand, now, I'll ask the students to call attention to their fingers as they're doing this. This is what they almost always do. They'll go and they'll look at their fingers. That immediately screws up their fingers. Again, you have to remind them, let your elbow relax and be soft. And you just want to look at your fingers as they're relaxed down by your side. You'll notice that everyone's fingers curve a little bit as they're having their arm relax. Most people will have their fingers curved so that their fingernails are roughly parallel to the floor. Uh, but different hands have different amounts of curvature and the mind don't go quite that far. Um, it just varies from hand to hand. The bow hold always starts out from a relaxed hand with the fingers curved in a relaxed way. You want to keep your hand as close to this relaxed position as you possibly can. The next thing I'll do is I'll bring the bow to them. I'll have them sit here with their relaxed hand. I'll ask them to turn their palm out just a little bit but again, keeping the fingers curved and relaxed, keeping the elbow soft and relaxed. I'll take the bow and I'll just set it on the shelf that gets made by these fingers. A lot of kids will want to do this. Don't let them do that. Make sure they keep their wrist straight, their elbow soft, and the bow just sits there on the curve that the fingers have naturally. Again, you want to keep the fingers as natural or as close to natural as you possibly can. The way I like to line the fingers up, the third finger touches the ferrule. That's really the main touch point. When you put the bow in, ferrule sits on the tip of the third finger. The rest of the fingers just go in as relaxed a manner as you can. You don't want to let kids squish them all together. You don't want to let them spread them apart. Again, think about the relaxed hand, how much space is between each finger. That's about the amount of space that you want between each finger when it sits on the bow. Third finger sits on the ferrule. Tip of the pinky goes flat on the frog. This is what I'm always saying to my cellos and bass players because, of course, the French bass bow hold is almost identical to the cello bow hold. Tip of the pinky flat on the frog. Third finger to the ferrule, tip of the pinky flat on the frog, fingers relax. The tip of the thumb comes to the top of the stick right where the frog meets the stick. So right here on the corner of the frog where it meets the stick, Tip of the thumb goes right there. You have a bent thumb. Bent thumb is the most important part of any bow hold. So when I'm teaching my orchestra classes, I teach everybody the most important part of your bow hold, whether you're a violin, viola, cello, or bass, is Mr. Bent Thumb right there. So of course, it doesn't bend as far as if you're a violin or a viola player, which comes down underneath, but you still, so you don't want to see this. But you still do want to see some flexibility in the bow hold because this is critical for playing fast or playing smooth legato notes is having this flexibility right here in the fingers for which the bent thumb is a critical aspect of that. A couple of common problems you see at this stage 
particularly happens when you get the third finger not on the ferrule. A lot of times kids will hold the bow further back here. They'll get the second finger to the ferrule, which I know that some cello players prefer the second finger to go on the ferrule. But they'll get back here, and then they end up having to squeeze the bow. Because the thing about a German, and then the tip drops. The thing about a French bass bow is there's a lot of material out here, and the bow ends up getting pretty heavy. So you have to really think carefully about leverage. And this is, I think, why the third finger being on the ferrule is so important. And when you see this happen, or when you see this happen, kids have a really hard time supporting the bow, and the tip drops. If you think about the bow as a lever, the tip of your index finger, the index finger where it crosses the stick, that's your fulcrum. The closer the fulcrum is to where you're putting the, the weight onto the back part of the bow, the harder it is to support the tip. So if your index finger gets back here, you have no choice but to squeeze. If you bring the third finger to here and let these fingers spread forward a little bit, the, leverage, the lever system is much, much easier. If you get that index finger a little bit further away from your thumb, it becomes much easier to support the tip of the bow than if you get the index finger back here close to the thumb. That's one of the main problems I see in French baseball holds is just the distance between the thumb and the index finger is not enough, so it requires squeezing to support the tip of the French baseball. So here's a slightly different angle. Hopefully you can see the position of all the fingers. Again, third finger goes on the ferrule, tip of the thumb, and I think from this angle you can probably see a little bit better the actual position of the thumb. Because when you come down near the frog, you, the stick is in the shape of an octagon. So whether you have a round stick or an octagonal stick for your actual bow, down here by the frog, the stick is always an octagon. You have a facet right here on top, and then you go down a little bit on this side and a little bit on this side. You really want the thumb not to be on the very top facet, but the next facet in, right where the frog meets the stick. Third finger sits on the ferrule, tip of the pinky, flat on the frog. Your fingers spread in a relaxed with a relaxed amount of space between each finger, your index finger far enough away that you don't have to use much strength to keep the tip of the bow up. One of the things I'll always try to have my kids do is just kind of a little bit like this, just to make sure that they're using the minimum amount of strength possible from their thumb to hold up the bow. Nice and relaxed, a little bit of flexibility right here. You have the fulcrum here on the index finger that your thumb is balancing the bow and your thumb a little bit inside on that next to the top facet of the stick so that when you do start to put the bow on the string and you have to twist into this, the stick a little bit to transfer weight out in the upper parts of the bow, that you've got some purchase here with your thumb. Okay, so just a couple more things and then we're gonna wrap this one up. A couple of common problems you see with the French bow hold. This is probably the most common problem that I see. And you end up sounding like that. There's a couple of names I have for this one. Sometimes I'll call it the chicken wing because you see what happens with the elbow. Sometimes I'll call it the fist because the hand ends up looking like a fist from the outside or the pointer because the index finger ends up coming forward like this. You see this all the time. Um, there's a couple of things that cause this. The main thing I'll tell kids to help them fix it is I'll remind them tip of the pinky flat on the frog because what's happened is they've let the stick come up onto the base joint of their pinky finger instead of right here, the first knuckle of the pinky finger coming around the stick so that the tip of the pinky sits flat on the frog. They'll let it come up like this and then the whole hand turns and the index finger points and you end up with the fist, which kind of forces the elbow to bend, causes all kinds of problems. So a lot of times they'll say tip of the pinky, flat on the frog. They'll bring that pinky back out and they'll be able to reform their bow hold. The other thing sometimes if that doesn't work is I'll talk about the index finger. Make sure the index finger supports the tip. And then they'll remember, oh yeah, I've got to wrap the index finger around and that becomes the fulcrum and I balance the bow between my index finger and the tip of my thumb. And then it's much easier because what happens is kids will get like this and you don't have the fulcrum far enough from your thumb. They'll start to squeeze the bow because you kind of have to if you get the index finger too close and then their hand gets tired and they do this just to try to relieve 
the pressure on this thumb muscle right here, but if they can get the tip of the pinky here, third finger to the ferrule, index finger far enough away from the thumb, then they don't have to squeeze nearly as hard and it's a whole lot more comfortable. You can get this bow hold where the elbow, or this bow stroke rather, where the elbow stays relaxed or soft, never straight because then they lock it out, which causes different problems, relaxed or soft, swinging from the shoulder. In terms of that bow stroke going back and forth, a word about the wrist. Let me see if I can pull my sleeve back just a little bit here so you can see the shape of my wrist as I go. The shape of the wrist will change through the length of the bow stroke. As I come out towards the tip, the wrist bends back this way a little bit. Moving back into the frog, the wrist bends forward a little bit. I'll call this the hill and the valley. So I'll remember, remind kids to make the hill and then going the other way to make the valley. And that will help them keep their elbow relaxed and keep the bow straight throughout the course of the bow stroke. Um, I think that's really the basics of the French bow hold. Again, you want to, well, I guess here, here's one other thing because you know, if you watch my other boat videos, you know that I'm a German bow player, although I do teach a lot of French bow. The pinky here, when you watch really good players play, you see a lot of flexibility this way in the pinky. So a lot of times kids will kind of squeeze with that pinky. You want to get them to relax. So as you go out here, a lot of players will let that pinky slide up on the frog. And they'll come back in and they'll let the pinky come back down over the frog, keeping the contact point between the pinky and the frog really, really loose, really relaxed and flexible. I can't tell you how many top players, when they go back and forth on their French bow hold, let that pinky slide in a little, slide in and out a little bit as they go through their bow strokes. So again, just giving evidence of how relaxed the bow hold is. Letting the string hold the bow up a little bit, getting the index finger far enough away from the thumb, just enough strength to hold the bow up, and letting these other fingers be really, really relaxed are really the keys to a great French bow hold. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, if you have found this helpful, yeah, please be sure to like my video, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.